Today I'm going to give you a quick overview of my desk setup and the equipment that's been driving the channel for all this time. I get loads of questions about what hardware I run and what I use to record audio and a few other things, so hopefully this will clear that up and throw some ideas out there. This is a pretty overkill setup, though both of my jobs are computer based, so this stuff makes life go a lot easier. Let's cover peripherals first, starting with my Vortex Poker 3 keyboard. This is a 60% mechanical keyboard with Cherry MX Brown key switches. Simply put, it's the best damn feeling keyboard I have ever used. It uses high quality PBT plastic keycaps, which are a big step up over the usual ABS plastic, and it also features a solid metal base. It's hefty, well built, and comes in at about 90 pounds. Despite the small form factor, you also get full functionality via the function key, and it's got multiple programmable layers. Overall, this thing is very high quality and it just feels great to use. As far as mice go, I've used a Razer Naga since its inception and I don't think I'll be stopping soon. Once you get used to the extra keys, they offer a lot of utility in games and they're a really big boost to your productivity. The 2014 variant added mechanical key switches to the thumb pad, which feel fantastic. Overall, the Razer Naga is a fantastic recommendation for me, especially if you play MMOs, and judging by this channel, I'm pretty sure you do. My mouse mat is a Razer Goliathus Extended. There's not much to say about it, but I like the large size. It just means my mouse never runs off it. It's also nice for my wrists, and it's just overall a solid bet. I heartily recommend them. Next, my audio solution is twofold. First, I use an Audio-Technica ATH-M50, closed back studio monitor headphone. These offer a neutral frequency response, they're studio cans, and this makes them really good for mixing audio, which of course is something that I end up doing pretty much on a daily basis. I also use Harman Kardon sound sticks too. These were a bit of an impulse purchase because they were on a sale for 50 pounds, down from 112 on Amazon. For the money that I paid, I'm very impressed. They sound pretty crisp, the bass is pretty good, and overall, they're just a solid enough bet. They've got an interesting design which might look good on your setup as well. I don't know a great deal about the wider speaker market though, so do your own research before purchasing anything. Next, I record audio using an Electrovoice RE20 microphone. This is an old favorite when it comes to radio broadcasting, and it's pretty easy to hear why. Without going into super technical stuff, it basically does a great job of providing that rich radio sound. It's an XLR microphone, so it needs to be plugged into an audio interface. I use a Scarlett 2i2 because it was a decent price and overall has glowing reviews. I don't know a great deal about audio interfaces, but suffice to say, I plug my microphone in and nothing explodes, so I'll take it as a victory. A key part of using a microphone is addressing it properly, something which is very much helped by a suspension arm. I use a Rode PSA-1, which is a solid balance between price and build quality. It's lasted me for the life of the channel, so it definitely comes recommended. Next, it's monitor time. My setup is a bit crazy currently, sporting two 24-inch portrait monitors, a 34-inch 1440p ultrawide, and a 4K TV. These monitors are meant to be split up between two different rigs, one where I live and one in the new office once I move in, so right now it is really a bit mad. The two 24-inchers are a standard affair, though one of them is a 144Hz TN panel. It's fantastic for shooters, but color quality really suffers on both of these monitors. My Dell U3415W, though, is a different story. It's a 21 by 9 aspect ratio ultrawide, curved IPS monitor that supports 99% sRBG coverage and a vase amount. It's also got a great matte screen and the body has got a matte finish. This fights off fingerprints and does a great job at diffusing glare. The only downside is some minor backlight bleed in the very corners, but that's something that appears to occur with everything that uses this 34 inch curved LG panel. Gaming on this monitor is a dream though. The ultrawide aspect ratio means that it really utilizes your full field of view, which makes for a very immersive experience. Response times are average for a IPS panel, but they're not really noticeable unless you are a hardcore CSGO player. It also shines when it comes to workflow. 
Editing is a lot more pleasant once you configure Premiere Pro to fully use the available size, as having an extra large timeline and plenty of space for all the needed panels is just a superb benefit to the workflow. Now, the 4K display is imported from Korea at an overall cost of £400. For the money, it has an excellent panel, though you won't be getting any smart TV features, something that I'm fine with because I'm using it as a monitor. Driving the Dell, though, can be uh, tricky enough, and the 4K monitor is even more demanding, so you will need beefy graphics hardware. I also need to deglass this display, which is a process that just involves a heat gun and a bit of prying. The glass is overly reflective, and it's just a bit of a pain. My desktop is a Blackwood veneer IKEA glance top, and it's on a crank-operated sit-stand base. Having a standing desk is fantastic for, well, my back and also general energy, though it's almost needed for me because I spend such a stupid amount of time working on the computer. I also wouldn't recommend getting a black color. It's not great for light, and it really shows up dirt. The computer itself is meant for video work and gaming. It's built in a Corsair 750D case, and I really love the sort of clean aesthetic and easy building experience that this case brings. The computer has an i7-4790K CPU, which is water-cooled by a Corsair H100i and overclocked to a pretty good 4.7 GHz. I have 32 GB of 1600 MHz RAM, I think it's Corsair Vengeance. 32 may seem like a lot, but Premiere Pro fully utilizes it. My GPUs are a bit overkill for anything below 1440p at 144Hz. These EVGA NVIDIA 980SC ACX 2.0 cards basically tear through just about everything. My storage solution reflects how large lossless 60fps footage can be. I have two Western Digital Red 6TB cards, which are in a rather risky RAID 0 as my main volume that I work from. I use an old, crucial 256GB SSD as my boot drive, and a newer 512GB SSD for some games and commonly used programs. I've then got another RAID 0 of two 3TB Seagate drives. The Seagate drives, though, will be shipped off to my office computer once it's built. Overall, this is a lot of storage, but I routinely end up using most of my main RAID, so it's definitely needed. I also use a late 2014 13-inch Retina MacBook Pro. I try to do as much writing work outside of the house as I can so the cabin fever doesn't set in. It's powerful enough to do basic editing, Unity development, and it's got a great keyboard for writing, so it pretty much covers everything that I use it for. Now, overall, this is a lot of money to spend on a setup, but... This is pretty much what I work on 12 hours a day, 7 days a week between YouTube and development, so the money spent here really does make things a lot smoother. Anyway, that's basically it for the setup. If you've got any questions about YouTubing, audio stuff, and PC builds, or anything like that, drop them down in the comments, and I'll probably get around to answering you. Anyway, that's been it for me. I hope you enjoyed this video. Bit of a departure from the norm, but I think it's okay to spice things up once in a while. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.